be back. Sorry, I missed last week. I just want to see where the guests are. Hello? You're from the newspaper. Yes. Great. Okay. All right. Is it any of our guests? I want to say you have a few minutes. No? Welcome. You want to pull, pull up so the sun doesn't get you. We'll uh, start our meeting. Uh, has everyone had a chance to look through the last month's minutes? Any questions on anything in there? The only sad part that I saw in there was uh, was Jesus rolling <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, but it was. If it wasn't pick, bad enough, <laughs> two more we'll melting to the floor now. <laughs> you know, I'm going to pick on you for two more months. <laughs> Okay, do I have a, an approval of the minute of the last minute? So any so changes or adjustments to it? Uh, so so moved. Is there a second? Okay, I'm second. Thank you. <coughs> We've got a lot of notes, so you, it's going to take me a while to just run through this stuff. Okay, my report. Uh, We've had an interesting uh, month, two, month and a half or two months with, with Manny and I. We've been doing a lot of traveling. Um, we have met with the Merrill College president and talked to him about how the, the college and the library could work together and uh, help, help the community. And then we met with the library the librarian from Mississippi State and did the same thing with them, with Will Buck and talk to him about how we can be part of the you know, Mississippi State's program going forward and how the library can, can do that. And then we met with the Massey group, uh, with Randy Massey and, and his group to see what is actually going on in downtown Maryville and how the library can be part of downtown Maryville's uh, growth. And, and I want to go over some of the things that were you going to cover that in your, your presentation? I wasn't, but okay, okay. I want to go over some of the things that maybe no one knows, or, or if you do know and it's repetitive, you probably know it already. But but uh, I was really blown away with what 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 they have in mind for downtown Maribel. They've been the massive. Randy Massive. There's a collection of developers. He's one of them. I'm just sharing. Yeah. yeah. No, I, and I guess I don't know who else is. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe Zappa. Joe Zappa. David Shanks. The, the Justice Construction is part of it. Who, who else? Is David it? Shanks. He is part owner of the building of Bella now and a few other ones downtown. Uh, Tommy Spears, um, James Tomachek. That's mostly the now. But they've been doing a lot of uh, soliciting with the downtown with with the mayoral commission, trying to get some them off the dead center on doing some things with downtown Maribel. And we want to make sure the library is part of that. Uh, one of the things, <laughs> first thing he, he said to us was, "Well, we I know you why you're here," and we said, "Why?" And he said, "Well, you're gonna, you're opposed to the tunnel." Do any of you know about the a tunnel? Uh, no. Okay, that's the same thing that that we said. We don't know what you're talking about. He said, "Well, you're not opposed to the tunnel." We said, "We don't even know what the tunnel is." Yeah. So, what his one of his proposals is to tear down the Daily Times building, to then eliminate that parking lot and the road that comes down that you use for a shortcut to bypass the light the top of the hill and to close that road and create a parking garage there and a five-story parking garage plus a five-story condo complex where the Daily Times is. That road is a straight shot across our bridge, across the lake. And you can see from, what is that, Harper? You can see that, that down that, that street, you can see the library. So what he is proposing is to put a tunnel which would be a, about a two-story tunnel through the parking garage, through the connection between the parking garage and this condo complex. And the, that's the tunnel that he's talking about. He felt we would be opposed to that. Uh, the way we looked at it as, as a library group was, 
you're bringing 200 people across the street from us within 200 yards. Uh, how can we possibly be opposed to something like that? And that kicked off the meeting pretty well. So we were, we were pretty positive after that. But the plans for downtown Maryville are the church downtown would, would go away that's in that office building, become a bakery, the steps that would that go down to, to whatever the other street is uh, down there that was an eyesore and a drug hangout. Uh, would be converted to tables and chairs and part of a restaurant for, for a, a, a brunch cafe and a, and a bakery cafe. And the old armory is being converted to a, to a sports. sports center, yeah. sports bar, bowling alley, whatever complex. And so the idea of downtown Maryville suddenly is widening and widening a lot, which is re really, I think, really good for, for, for Merrill, adding adding parking areas and, and just additional things to do in Merrill in the downtown Merrill. So, so we were for that. I, I, I hope you all get more involved in, in what's happening and uh, go to the your commission meetings and see what's going on. And, it was it was interesting and it's good that we get get to go to some some of these areas and, and talk to them. So we still have some other places to hit in these next couple months, if, which we will do. So that's pretty much my report. Uh, one of the things that before we move on that I've asked for, we started doing reports from from the different sections of the library and coming in. And so to, today, I, I asked the educational department to uh, the, the adult educational department to come in and talk about the seed catalog that we had such a tremendous kickoff on the seed catalog and uh, the lady who actually started that with us was sick today so uh, Kathleen Christie where is Kathleen? Yes, you I'm know. sorry is is going to report on the seed catalog so now? Yeah, now okay all right which is work hi um, first of all, I'm standing in for Sheila Penikoff, who's not able to be here, but she is the one who's the, who's the force behind this. She started it and she's been maintaining it and it is her passion. Um, it has been very popular. She's been interviewed representing the library at least eight times on local TV, the Daily Times, um, a national farm newspaper, the Tennessee Friends of the Library. She's even had um, a master gardener from Johnson City call and ask for, for advice on how they could do something the same way at their library. Uh, the programs that we have had for this include winter sewing, not pant stitching, but <laughs> sewing with seeds. Um, We've had a seed swap this year. She has had authors come. Um, she's had quizzes on Facebook. She's had an ugly vegetable contest and people, <laughs> people sent in pictures and, and they voted on which was the worst. We had programs on canning and food uh, preservation and save the date on August 13th, we're going to have an heirloom tomato tasting celebration. Uh, I love tomatoes, so, so I think that'd be great. Um, what you do in order to borrow seeds, you read this, and if you pass that out, and you, you will come and look at these. We have flowers down here and herbs here and vegetables here and they're in alphabetical order. So then you would take one of these cards and you write down, you take up to five packets of seed per card per month. So if you have a family with six cards in it, you are allowed to take out 30 packets of seeds. Um, we do ask that you return some of the seeds in the fall and then that way it keeps up 
the it keeps up the supply. Um, there are further calls on the website and on this pamphlet to tell you how to save seeds, how to um, what we need for the seeds that come back to us. But um, as of this morning, we from February first, we have lent. 1,632 packets of seeds. It's been a great year. People are really getting into this. I, I like to say that we are literally feeding Black County. So, um, pull out a couple of packets. Hmm? Pull out a couple of packets. Supply chain problems. Okay, okay. here are snap peas. Okay, so you take them and write down, oh, and then, and then you put that in, in here so she can keep count and know what we have and know what's missing and she keeps count of what's been used so she knows what's popular. Um, so, and I'm going to put that back in in alphabetical order. Do we have, for instance, here's some, how do you say it? Amaranth? Amaranth? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay. Love wise bleeding. We have herbs, basil, Genovese, basil. It's so local. We had, um, when we first started, someone said that they had seeds from this man. It went, where are we? Where's the parking lot? Over here. Okay. On that hill at the end of the parking lot, there's a man whose name was Taz, and he had planted seeds. What are they? What are they? Pole beans? Uh, yeah, some kind of beans that some his kind of bean. grandmother had grown. Like from the 1800s. 1800s. Oh, and and, so and someone had gotten some seeds from him over the years. And when we started, she donated a lot of those seeds. So there's been a real community um, enjoyment of this. So um, I don't know if there was anything else I was going to tell you. Is there, is there anything? Did that answer some of your basic questions? And feel free to get some seeds. <laughs> so how do people get the seeds back to you? There are instructions on the website and some in the pamphlet that tell you how you harvest your seeds. Um, if they're hybrids, we don't want them because they would not, they would not um, grow true. But um, then put them in, possibly um, a Ziploc bag, um, identify them, up with the date and give the basic information. If you know the, the cultivar and the popular name, put that down and give us your name if, if we, in case we have any questions. And then um, in addition, the friends have been very supportive because we, we always buy a supply of seeds to, to start with. The friends and the master, Gardens have been marvelous partners in this. Did you have a question? Well, I was just going to reinforce that uh, the master gardens are really fantastic. The project that we're not doing in the And their goal is to feed the, feed the black cat like you do. Okay. And so it's a good collaborative effort between the two organizations. They volunteered. They're, they're a big, big help. So, Okay. Well, where do you keep the catalog? I'm so, this is in the reference department. I wanted you to sit, to see it so when you're walking around, you know where to actually get the seeds. So I told them at, at the desk, if anyone comes up tonight looking, they'll just have to come yeah. here. <laughs> okay? Right, thank you. We're going to continue this program. I, I think it's been fun. I, I think all of you have enjoyed it too. So we can continue this each month going forward now. Okay, uh, Manny, you're next up. Um, yeah, my angel is not here. She's not online. Okay. Things we did meet with uh, the foundation. And then went over some things with them and see what happens in the future. <laughs> Manny, do you want to sure. have your report? Just want to say first, uh, today, 
our facilities team uh, started to mow the landscaping here. Our machines, our large mower and the smaller mower have been in the shop being repaired. The large one is back and we have a pretty uh, extensive landscaping here. So they were working on it today. Uh, they also have a trimmer. So uh, they should be finishing up tomorrow. So it'll be another all day. They've been taking their time just because the grass is so long and it's still wet. So they've been taking their time with that. I attended my first Tennessee Library Association conference last, uh, last week in Knoxville. And actually some of the librarians here were present as well. And they made one heck of a first impression for me. The first day I was there, I was part of a level five summit. So I got to meet all the level five library directors in the state of Tennessee, which was great for me. And I think great for them too. They were trying to learn more about where I came from and how Massachusetts libraries handle certain things such as advanced books and that handles it a little differently than what's happening here. But again, what was great about it was I started to make uh, headway and start building relationships with uh, my colleagues, my fellow colleagues, including Andrew Hunt, who's director down at the Cleveland Bradley County Library, where I, I have to go down there because I don't know where that is. Mm -hmm. But I also invited him to come up and I'll give him a tour of Blunt County Public Library. Mm -hmm. um, it was an all day affair. So it began at nine in the morning, concluded about seven, 7.30. Mm -hmm. And our keynote speaker, which, I, I didn't mention a list before, and that is my third time seeing David. I saw him at a New England Library Association conference. It was in Stowe, Vermont. This was many, many years ago. And then about five years ago, he was in Worcester, Massachusetts, and he spoke at the Massachusetts Library Association. And this gentleman, he is right now a professor at the University of Te Texas, a different UT. Uh, dynamic presentation. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> um, he, uh, he is so passionate about libraries that he has his own podcast um, that is updated weekly. Uh, and he talks about all the current trends and all the news going on with libraries when it comes to academic libraries, public libraries, school libraries, and also those special, special interest libraries. He was fantastic. And then we got to see him the following day as he was the keynote speaker for the entire conference. So it was in a large auditorium area and got to see award winners and, and just some of my colleagues were there too. And we got to just enjoy a fantastic presentation uh, from David. Following that, I was in the exhibit hall, just starting to speak with vendors, and then also attended four programs. Um, mostly, um, I, was, I was more looking at community-based presentations. Um, a lot of it I was doing uh, in Massachusetts that I intend to do here. So, it was fantastic. It was a great first impression. Next year, it's in Memphis. Mm -hmm. So uh, I look forward to that and started to make some really good uh, friendships. What's that now? I said, I don't know. You may not. Uh, this is a lot mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, just talking, I, I just want to break down regarding my report with youth services. Um, Next month, I'm going to have uh, Chelsea Tower uh, do a presentation. Uh, it be a kickoff for summer reading program. And we're actually having something called Touch a Truck, which mm -hmm. have any of you been yeah. with Touch a Truck before? Mm -hmm. They're fantastic. And they have you know, street sweepers, police, fire, bucket trucks. I've been there where there was a tank, <laughs> trying to get a, an airplane, and, you know, and the kids get to sit in the vehicle and Unfortunately, they, if one hears the horn, then they all discover the horn. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a great, it's a great um, program and the kids have a lot of fun. They did a smaller one when the Atlanta Braves trophy was um, across from the courthouse a couple of, about a month or so ago. Uh, but that's great. So I'm gonna have Chelsea come next month 
and just talk about all the wonderful programs. And she is a dynamo when it comes to youth services programs. So we'll have her, have her next month. Um, our uh, adult services update, we did, it, it, the adult services did a little something different, which I always enjoy. And these were just sample questions that the reference desk gets. Um, and again, this is just a small sample, but you can see the type of questions and, and the research that's involved in these questions. So we, adult services changed it up a little, which was great. Has anyone seen the new spring display? So uh, that was uh, Penny Stewart and Josephine. I say Benavides, but I guess it's Benavides. Benavides. There are Portuguese people with Benavides in the same. So I, uh, but it, regardless, it's a wonderful display. So if you get a chance, if you haven't seen it, please go to the uh, circulation area and you'll see it right dead in the center. Um, just the uh, thought process that, that goes into that is incredible. Uh, we have a new addition to our update and that's hospitality services. And uh, that's all for Chelsea Matheny, who's in the back. She does such a wonderful job when it comes to booking and handling all the meeting rooms, as well as that bookmark cafe, which is just, it's gold, it's a gold mine. And just a few new uh, items uh, that she added to the update. Uh, we picked up the Philanthropic Educational Organization Chapter T Women's Club. They are gonna be meeting here once a month. We also will have the Chilhawi. Chilhawi, I got it right. I, I, better, I better get that one right, yeah. Um, they're gonna be meeting here every month as well. And none of that would have been done if it wasn't for, for Chelsea. So we, we appreciate that. Um, we also had your job fair in here and it was for the US Postal Service. And it was, it was extremely busy, which was great to see. And again, it's ample parking, wonderful facility. Um, we are gonna have a fire drill. So we had risk management come, was it last week, met with the safety team. And we're gonna have a fire drill next Tuesday and uh, we'll see how that goes. But that'll be happening. Um, just a brief update on some of the projects. As far as the children's area with, with the Harmon donation, we're just waiting for one uh, specific piece of furniture and that should be complete. AARP should be complete because taxes are done. So that will now be our young adult or teen area. We have some great plans with that. Uh, still working with Chris Sorrow when it comes to the, uh, the book drop area as well as uh, Anjane and I had a meeting with Chris about that, but he's also gonna be looking at creating plans for the freight elevator um, and also the downstairs restrooms. We need that in order for us, including the foundation to go on and start fundraising. So, um, that's, oh, one more thing. Hot Summer Nights is coming back. It's gonna be Thursdays in August. Uh, we have this year, uh, Robin Ellen will be performing, uh, who's, what, folk rock? Folk rock. Uh, Wild, uh, Wild Blue Yonder, Celtic music. We're also gonna have Beatles for Sale, which is a Beatles tribute band out of, out of Nashville. And we have a band called The Get Up, and they are a cover band and they play disco music. So a little <laughs> something different here at the library. And that's my report. If anyone has any questions or... Any questions? Questions of Manny or? I have a comment. Uh, about three years ago, we were really debating whether the cafe was an idea that made sense. And we turned that into money. So it's really a good method for what you guys have done to kind of convince the body that it's worthwhile. It's a great bottom line. It's a great job. I'll see, I had my mom in town from Louisiana, she's an educator, brought her here yesterday. She was so impressed that she could get coffee and water and walk around the library with water. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold this. That's great. So she just thought what an asset. Thank you.
I did I did want to follow up um RFID tagging. Are you still oh, sure. volunteers yes. or <laughs> go to the audio section? Yeah, yeah, we still need volunteers. <laughs> so uh, yes, I I'm sorry. I you know we we talk about it all the time that it becomes like good morning, how is how's your day? Oh, it's going well. That's how RFID is to us. But yes, we still need volunteers. And I don't have the specific number, but Andrene, how many items have been encoded now? 136,000 plus as of Thursday morning. Thursday morning. So, and it uh, those include, it's a mixed bag. So mainly books, but there's some, uh, like when I, we're just starting the DVDs, there may be a few audiobooks. We knew the DVDs and the audiobooks would be bugbears. But if you want a thrilling experience, volunteer for the DVDs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the books done. Are all the books done? Not in COVID. Okay. Almost all of them. I think uh, reference and archive still. Working on our cups right now, and we're still working. No. It was a great idea to close the library. Thank yes. you all for yes. being along with that. It would never would have happened if the library was not closed that week. I think employees enjoyed it too. Let's do it every year. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you all for those of you that came and, and volunteered. It was great. Did you want to go over the budget at all? Anybody have any questions on the budget that, that's, that was included here? Just a couple of things to call out. Uh, we're 73% under. Uh, we should be at 60.55 or at 73 under. So that's fantastic. The revenues are, again, way up over what was budgeted. So again, congratulations back there and, and to the rest of the staff for the renting of the rooms and whatever is going on. But the, the budget certainly looks great. Can you refresh my memory on the, on the lawn? Didn't we buy a piece of equipment a year ago? Or yeah. 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 And it should... It should uh, be working, but it didn't. When we... Okay, so we bought something new, but then it goes to the county July 1st, or what's? Or... The, the lawn equipment won't go to the county. But they'll start taking care of the grounds July 1st? Or... Yes, so general services. And I'm going to have Don Stallion come in June and speak more about how this relationship, because it's, it's brand new, so there's going to be stumbles along the way but they'll be handling all the facilities and they, didn't, they don't start till next month correct right? july 1st july 1st yeah, start of the fiscal so this year. is our library staff has to take care of it until july 1st yeah. yeah okay so do we sell that equipment or do they use that equipment? what happens that's a discussion that we'll have with don yeah I want to ask, how did the commission presentation go? Stephanie was there too, and a few others, including Anjane and Anna. When I thought it went, I thought it went well. I thought uh, the presentation that Anjane and Anna uh, created, I thought was great. It was clear, it was concise, and it was easy for me to interpret what was on those slides. Um, my reception from based on my presentation I thought was very positive. I thought um, Commissioner Anderson uh, spoke very highly of, of the library and the budget. And I thought the mayor uh, said some great things and positive, positive things about the future of the library and the relationship. I don't know, Stephanie. Yeah, I would agree. agree. I would agree. And, and it was very encouraging as far as the, this facility and making some improvements, let's put it like the roof and things like that and supporting that um, never fixing the roof especially. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. 
We felt really good leaving leaving the room. Yes, thank you. And it was short and concise. Yeah, right to the point. Any other questions? Okay, um, we move to. Did you have anything on the foundation? No. Matt. Yeah, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bruce. Give a report from the from friends. Yeah, uh, just a few things I want to share with you. At the same meeting, Manny went to the TLA slash uh, Tennessee uh, Friends of the Library. Diane Rocco got her uh, award from uh, Friends of the Library from the state. Uh, so she brought it in today, um, and we're very proud of that. Um, the uh, we talked last time about needing to expand eBay. Uh, we're out of room, and Dick and friends, about two days later, we're down there pounding, shelving, and putting everything together. And we now have, I don't know how much, but we've really expanded our eBay footprint down there. A lot of it's uh, already mapped out. Uh, it's not full yet, but it's, it's getting there, and it was, it was really needed. So that is all done, and they're they're getting moved in right now. Um, we did make a milestone with our our dealings with eBay, in the fact that uh, we went over a hundred thousand dollars for the year with them. And one of the perks is we get an actual real life person to talk to. And uh, they've already had a number of meetings and they're all excited because we don't get to go to some call center and wait for call back and all that stuff. So that's that's been exciting. We are working our budget, which will be our, our internal budget for next fiscal year. Also our board nominees. And I'm currently pointing toward a, about a June 8th um, annual meeting of the Friends of the Library. We have one every year, the purpose being to uh, share progress, elect the new board, and uh, <coughs> share budget. That's about all I've got, Andy. As usual, thank you very much for everything you do. They're tremendous what's going on is there any there, there are no tax restrictions are I mean, I mean, I uh, no well a couple of years ago betsy smith we had at one time a hundred thousand dollar seal and we were going to start getting taxed I, I think that was back in denise's <clears throat> reign but denise and betsy um took on the task and betsy now has that raised to three hundred thousand dollars that went through the state with right? the state so we're we're clear for another few months <laughs> <laughs> i hope so thank you for that positive outlook. that's great okay. if you haven't been downstairs take a walk downstairs they keep expanding and expanding and it's great well, the real the reality of the situation is our paradigm is shifting. Online sales is really taking a front row seat, and we're keeping them going. Okay, um, next up is Liz Schrecker. Oh, uh, so you all have our April report. Um, we've already talked about core competencies, I think, a couple of times, so I didn't bring that handout again. <laughs> um, you'll see our trainings. Uh, we were very pleased. TSLA was pleased to offer the Level 5 Summit in conjunction with the TLA um, conference this year. Uh, typically, we'll, we'll host the Level 5 Summit. Uh, those have been held in November. This was our third one. Um, but due to pandemic and people not wanting to be in person in November, we moved it and we thought, well, we'll just do it in conjunction with TLA. So then people that are coming to TLA can go to Level 5 and then come to TLA. So we were glad that all worked out really well. Um, 
it was a, a long day, but it was a good day. So I'm glad you enjoyed it. And it's a day where we bring all of our <clears throat> top tier library directors together for networking and, and top tier discussions and training. So we were glad to have Cordelia Anderson uh, present on marketing, uh, library marketing and communication. And, um, and then our David Lake is, of course, was the speaker for the evening for the dinner portion. So we were happy to do that. And we'll do it every year, I hope so. Um, we have our next in-person training uh, at the office. It will be in-person only is DISC assessment training uh, with Gail Spragans. That's April the 26th. Uh, and then of course, um, we have a library director roundtable June 16th and we are distributing and I for you to sign the annual library service agreement um, that is distributed to each one of our library boards. That's one of the three annual documents that we distribute. It's actually the contract, if you will, for the county boards to contract with the state for the libraries to receive regional services. And we do that each year. So that is the June 30th, but I'll leave that with you. If you would like to sign it, you can't, there's not been any changes um, to it. Uh, I know you all have been discussing recruiting new board members. So, and we've talked about core competencies. Um, really, that's that's mainly what's going on. We're plugging away business as usual. It's busy, busy time. Um, and you have the statistics for reads uh, on the back. So, we're plugging away. Is this a managed report? This is the state or our region have any kind of protocol for visiting other libraries or other libraries coming to visit us? Is there anything no, we no. can throw out and say, hey, you know, we'd love to have you come up? Or um, well, actually, we have, in the past, <clears throat> we just haven't yet, we have typically brought together, because we only have two level five libraries in our region. Right. And we have typically brought them maybe to meet each other at the regional office, but no, I, I think it's great for each one of them to go and and visit and see what's going on um, in each each one of them. So I'm glad that you two got to yeah. connect and you got to connect with some other level five libraries too, you know, um, so that everybody can talk about all the different things that come upon their table. With that, uh, post pandemic, are we moved back to the state perspective to business as usual? It's varied by community, each community. Um, most of our libraries in our region and, and most across the state, from what I hear from reports, are trying to get back to the service level. But of course, not just public libraries, all manner of institutions from churches and other organizations are, are still trying to get people to come back in and get back to that level you know, that they had before. So that's been a challenge, I think, for more than just our public libraries. But um, yeah, it's a topic for discussion and engagement, community engagement. We're working very hard. Okay, thanks, Liz. Okay, in old business, we have some committee reports. Um, Anna, do you have, a, uh, I, I didn't ask you, but do you have an update on, on the different committees and what they're meeting? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this Thursday, the Library uh, Services Committee will be meeting at 530 at the Learning Lab. And then the PR Committee, they will be meeting in Sharon Lawson on May 9th at 530. And then Finance will be meeting also in Sharon Lawrence on May the 12th at 530. Uh, the Marble Amphitheater Committee, we are looking at, and we'll uh, shoot out dates to that committee. We're looking at late May, having a committee meeting. Okay, any questions on that? Everybody knows what committee you're on? Okay, good. Yep. I read the... Uh, our bylaws is part of the package. It said I have to go to every one of those meetings. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, happy, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, the, and the committee meetings usually run about, I know this Thursday, the commission meetings at 6.30. So we'll probably go for about an hour. So I'll go to the commission meeting. <laughs> I don't think we have either. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, according to our bylaws, our uh, nominating committee will be voting is in June. Do we have do we want to have a committee report on that? Or yes, yes. Okay. Okay, Logan. Yes. Uh, so the nominating committee, which consists of myself, Stephanie Thompson, and Kim Neal, we met and uh, we uh, we wanted to present to the to the board a sort of candidate for chairman, co-chairman, or secretary. So we'll be here here um, nominating Andrews as the chairman. Co-chair uh, co Stephanie Thompson and Secretary Anna Cook. So those are the the uh, nominees from the committees. Now we're going to vote on this in, in, in June. What in our bylaws we vote in June? Okay. So in June, then we will uh, bring these particular nominees to the floor. And then open it up for additional uh, nom nomination. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other committee reports? Any anything on the amphitheater at all? Nothing. No. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. Is part of the nominations? Is that just the slated officers, or is that for members? We are doing report members, right? Do we need we need to fill a few positions or are we say that again? We're trustees, are we full on positions? What? And we have <laughs> we are open for a new trustee to oh, are you standing the for nominations. Yeah. And we still have two months. So are you out fill that we have uh, we have a slate so far, and I'll bring that to you next month. I keep hoping somebody changes their mind and we won't. <laughs> 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 okay. What what is are you a Blount County seat? Yes. Yeah, I, I Suzette is not here, but I talked to her a couple times this week and last week and uh, there was a total misunderstanding from the miracle uh, that and, and with her and the way it was presented to her that she thought she was on for a one year one one term for the regional and that then she would be finished and so see, she felt that since she was being finished anyway she didn't really need to come and didn't understand that she was appointed for a three year term with us and that our regional is part of our part of our trustee board from right from the get go. And that's the way our bylaws say it also. So, so uh, she was both, she will roll off of the regional but she stays on with us. And now she, I hope she, in our discussion yesterday, she understood that so, uh, again, so I, I We'll, we'll, we'll hope that. And Susan said that she locked herself out of her office and couldn't get back in today. So she couldn't get, she thought she was going to be late. But. Yeah, she said she <coughs> just wouldn't let me know she'd be late. And Suzette is the uh, assistant to the to the president of Maryville College. And so uh, who knows where their security is. And the regional board ends, doesn't it? Like this July. So there is no more regional board. Mm -hmm. So then she had two appointments. She had one for the one year remaining on the regional board, and then she had a three year or two yes. year yeah. as mayor. Okay. So then her in 2020, she's on here until 2024. That's correct. Is that right? Okay. She's going to come. Was she a. Was she a, a Was she regional? She was regional. But can you be regional and local? I was. Mm -hmm. 
you were and you rolled off, she took your place. I, when I was original, I was also local and Stephanie is too. But I guess the way it was explained to her was just regional. Right. That's somehow where the confusion came. It may be something in for board of orientation the next person. Well, regional goes away, so it's not the issue. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So she thought she was done. And so, so so in reality, moving forward, we will have one opening. We have one opening, correct. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> We're going to shave him in. They're short now. They're not all anymore. are not till 8 30. Okay. Um, any other old business that anything that you see or you want to bring up? That we have old business. Uh, old business, new business. We have two th two things: uh, amendment of the bylaws and uh, library hours. Which do you want to tackle first? Bylaws. 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 <laughs> <It's> easier. <laughs> okay. Anybody want to talk about the bylaws? Has every, everybody read through the bylaws? And do you see anything that you might want to change or look at or um, amend? This is a question. Uh, it, it appears that the allocation of funding is based on city population, Maryland, Alcoa, et cetera. But in reality, is that the way the funds are? It's funny you ask that because I asked Betty that yesterday, the same thing. And I wondered with the new census if they have taken a look at that. Um, so, what is it? The prior to that, not so much. Um, now, with I think that's an initiative that probably started, I want to say it started in 2019 that um, the funders wanted to have a closer representation of the library card holders usage. And so um, our patron services started um, making sure that every library card would have a, a GIS check so that we could verify where they were living. Mm -hmm. And that did come into play in this year's uh, budget presentation. Um, the county did ask for us to provide the makeup of active card holders and provide those um, stats to or within the budget presentation. So that percentage is um, moving in that direction. And as of July 1, it's, I think it's 60, 30, 10. Yes. The county 60 is 66. county. 30, Maribel, 10, Alcoa. And so what's Louisville, Louisville is county to county? At this stage, yes, ma'am. So That's what's the funding percent? We're going to be talking about going forward. So one of the things that I noticed on there, and I, I, I didn't know was in the bylaws, was the number of uh, by sex we could have on the board. I didn't realize that. And so we cannot have more than, what, five, six, 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 six of, of one sex. Or, or actually, I think it said female, right? The same sex. I'm going to take a second just to look through my notes here. So, so, so if we look at the breakout, um, does, does the funding population uh, match with the breakout? And for us, it's, it's nine billion. So if you look at the uh, six, three, one, at, 
theoretically be six, three, if we had 10 members, it'd be six county, three city, one county. So, so one out. We only have nine board members. I know, I'm just, the, I'm just trying to make Thank the math easier. Yeah. The math would be if we had 10. Because it's uh, <laughs> the 60, 30, and, and 10. Right? So that would be seven, but it's actually six, three, and one. That's one out four. How many more? Two. Two, Two more in this county. Right? <coughs> so that, that's reflective of the budget. But it would be interesting to see, uh, based on population, the way it's written, if, if it balances out that way. Uh, do you know, it has, has, I thought one county has decreased in population where Maryland Wild Coal has increased. Maryland Wild Coal has increased, I don't know about one county. <coughs> Overall, the county population has decreased. I don't know. I, I think we've increased quite a bit in the county because when they had to do the redistricting mm -hmm. of the commission, huh. and I lost part of, I lost two large subdivisions in my commission district because other places in my district had increased in population. Mm -hmm. So I think even the county has increased. Well, we'll work on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We can remove the regional language. Yes, that's the yeah. 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 That's what the it's, second is. Yeah. 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 Amended on yeah. 419. Okay. So the first copy is the original, yes. the second is the amended. Thank you. Okay, any other changes or anything that you see in here? And there's no changes. Okay, is there a second to accept these? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, well, it's actually revision. All right, uh, it's 20 after. Um, Limit this to an hour. <laughs> Discussion of the library hours. If you, there was several documents in the pack at this time. Um, it took me a few minutes to understand what that packet, what they, this was all about. Uh, this is the listing of the employees and their telephone extensions but it also gave you a listing by category of the number of employees that we had three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, and today by category. So it actually told you what, which, what categories are, are affected by the amount of employees that we've lost. And so we went from actually 52, employees, total employees to 38. And that 38 is inflated by the maintenance people. So we would lose what, four? Five. Five, okay. Five more out of 38. So we dropped down to 33. So we now have 33 employees running our library. So based on that, here's the, uh, the response that, or the, the schedule that Danny and Anjali put out to the, to the employees on how they felt hours. And the hours were listed at nine to nine, Monday through, I'm sorry, Monday through Friday. <clears throat> and then Monday through Saturday, or on Saturday, nine to 6.30, 31% uh, of, of the response said that, that before that, <clears throat> Nine to nine, Monday through Friday, or I'm sorry, Friday through, yeah, Monday through Thursday, nine to uh, nine to nine to five thirty, Friday and Saturday, and then Sunday, twelve thirty to five thirty, 
Thirty-six percent were in favor of that, and then Monday through Saturday, nine to seven, and Sunday nine nine to six thirty. Uh, Thirty-one percent were in favor of that. So there are other hours out there. So could I just say something? Brief? Yeah, and I want everybody to say sure. Something. Yeah, I'll be brief about this. So the hours that Andy just brought up that was posted with the patron survey. That, that came out. Uh, the, the final page, and, and the reason why we're discussing this today and um, speaking with other directors at level five, and I specifically asked about, are you back to your normal library hours of operation? Yes, they are. Um, I also think it's time for us, Lund County Public Library, to revert back to our library hours as well, which is 69 and a half. Um, and I'm proposing that this would begin July the 1st, the st start of fiscal year 23. Um, there are two other options that are available. Um, and I do thank Anna for creating um, the six, nine and a half hour suggestions, as well as printing out the, uh, the staff list. Um, you as trustees are the ones who are uh, the governing body and are the ones vote for these hours. Um, I can give recommendations and but you vote and discuss. My recommendation would be for the time being, as Andy stated, stated we're going to be down to 33 staff and no maintenance, no maintenance at all is for now to not open on Sundays. However, because I do think we should be open on Sundays, but not with 33 staff, not at all. Once we bump up to thinking 40, 41 staff, we can open up on Sundays again, because we can actually make it work. We're still gonna have hurdles. Facilities aren't gonna be around on, on the weekends now. So why is that? It's, it's only on an emergency basis and that's through Don. That's general services. County, county doesn't yeah. work on weekends. Exactly. And maintenance. But if there was an emergency, that would be. If someone does, yeah, if there was an emergency, but as far as cleaning, just right now cleaning the restrooms and stuff, they won't be here. Why can't their schedule be different? Yeah. Instead of working Monday through Friday, why okay. can our library employees, former library employees, yeah. not work? Tuesday through Saturday. We have county of, maintenance that works on weekends and special events. Or special. And weekends. Don has told us that as far as like cleaning the restrooms and the library, they won't be doing that unless there's an emergency, especially on Sundays. So is the proposal for the other staff to clean the restrooms? No, no I'm not proposing not, staff. No, no I'm just, what was his, what was his? Solution. He just said Sundays would be Sundays would be difficult. Saturdays, I know they do have someone on call at the at the jail at the at the prison. Um, but yeah. So Saturdays they would be cleaning. So the restroom doesn't even get cleaned on a Saturday. I, I think that, that we talked about this yesterday. I, I think that's a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. I can't see us going away from our cleaning our restrooms or having somebody available. Even if we have to hire a part-time person as a library. But that defeats the purpose of why we went with them at yeah. the beginning. Don, and, right. now Don is gonna meet with Anjanae and myself next week and we're gonna work on a memorandum of understanding. And I would like to see, and I know Anjanae would as well, to have someone handle the restroom, especially on Saturday. Well, I think if you're that doing that, sense. you should also think about Sunday, since where eventually the, yeah. the end goal. Because yeah. if you sign a contract right now, and all of a sudden you're you're stuck with that, and then we're going to have to offset that employee. So I yeah, think I think then. if we, I think, like I said, there's going to be some hurdles to jump, and I think we're going to learn on on the fly when it comes to all this. But an issue like you brought up will have to be addressed. So I think there's still there's still a lot going on. That being said, just adding that to the uh, to the suggestions. But again, 
Yeah. Does anybody know, are, there, are there any any buildings in the county or Maribel City that are open on Saturdays and Sundays other than the library? What? Well, you have ball games going on all the time. You <clears> have throat> events, throat> and so we had we always had custodial staff there on Saturdays for ball games or late at night or whatever. You just adjusted their schedule. They didn't. They didn't work Monday through Friday. They may work Tuesday through Saturday, or they may come in I, late. I just can't see if somebody throws up in the bathroom. Well, well they would what about moving, moving tables? Emergency. Emergency. Yeah. Emergency. Oh, oh, definitely. That's an emergency. Yeah. But not clean the bathroom on Saturday and Sunday. If you're open Saturday and Sunday, so that, it's a long that's time. a lot. Yeah. Time. Again, we're going to speak with Don about that next week. <clears throat> I just wanted to just throw that out there. Yeah. What are no, and it's good to know. So we appreciate your yeah. transparency with that. What are their schedules now? Our Custodial yeah. night slash we have Monday through Saturday right now. Yeah. And prior to COVID, Monday through Sunday, the custodial folks. Okay. I mean, I would propose to them in the MOU that they keep their same. So. Mm -hmm. We've had county folks work weekend events with us, our folks that a portion of it is, you know, county budget. On the weekends, our visitor centers. So. I agree with that. And again, we're going to sit with Don and because that's obviously something that needs to be addressed. You can't have yeah, yeah. washrooms not cleaned. Well, then I guess the population, I think, clearly seems to want some Sunday hours, according to this survey. And I think it's a nice idea to be closed Sunday. But what do the taxpayers want? Guys, I hate to do this to you. Oh, My son oh, has a oh, concert that I need to make sure that I can make it to. So I apologize. Um, before, before I leave, though, um, I, I do uh, agree about having service on Sundays. I do understand when you have the, the issues with personnel. And I don't know if there could be a happy meeting of potentially to start off if the staff would consider opening maybe the first Sunday of the month, um, just as a middle ground to, to gauge the potential, you know, how much does the population, how many, you know, is it really gonna be used on Sunday? So I don't know, but I'll definitely go with the majority. I trust everybody. <laughs> All right, sorry guys. And the government needs to, I think, know that that's what the people want and provide the resources. So, so you mentioned it earlier, uh, if you move from the 33 to 41, so what the yeah. end of, uh, Sunday opening this season. We'd have more bodies and we can right. schedule that, right. yes. But, 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 but then how the SDL leaves a custodial issue. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. So, so the custodial issue doesn't go away if you yeah. open on Sunday. Yeah. So more, more bodies that more, more bodies, bodies helps done. with the schedule. Yeah. People running the library, but not necessarily the king. Right. We'd have services provided on weekends because we'd have enough people. Yeah. Um, how do you plan on getting the 41 people? Is that going to commission with the budget increase? So I it's not going to come up in FY23, but I did at the finance meeting say that. I will go back in a year from now for the FY24 budget and ask for additional um, employ employees for the library. And I'll have enough statistics and data to say, yeah, you know, our circulation and our hours are increased and try to justify why we need more people. In our meetings with the funding bodies, we brought up with each of the mayors and the operations people that we would be asking for more money with no question going forward. Well, Maryville City did step up this last time. I know the county and Alcoa both did. They came forth with funding our last fund, time. Our contract ends next year. Yeah. We have one more year and then that's it. And then we can ask for more money. And we've we've made it perfectly clear to them that we're going to be asking for more money. 
whether we get it or not. That's that's another thing. But I would I would assume planning with the same budget for the next year. And so if we want to achieve Sunday eventually, do we look at cutting other areas and adding personnel? Is that more important? Hours and service and programming? And having more people to help your staff? It would. Yeah. We'd also lose, sir. It's it's so tricky because you're going to lose something. I just wouldn't bet on. I mean, that's, I just wouldn't bet on getting future funding. Does closing Sunday send a message to them that? If we don't have the funding, we can't open on Sundays. I'm just throwing this out as a question. And the public wants that. And does do then they complain to them that, well, we want Sunday hours. We need to get the library more funding. So the question is, there is there's a number, 133 to 401 plus 200 to X. And then the other piece, this is for some. So for the other piece is, uh, how do you then uh, the custodial, how is this custodial piece is probably more important than the, than the other piece that's in front. I mean, you have, you have established a particular level of um, performance, the clinic, whatever, and you start not being able to maintain restaurants and stuff it's it's a like I said, we're gonna talk to Don. Yeah, I know it's so there are so many moving parts in this. And I mean it's unfortunate that we're down that amount of staff and yeah. it is what it is. And I hear your the discussion with the county maintenance. Can you have your own employee here? Let's see library employee doing maintenance work? I don't I don't have an answer. I, I would have to speak to Don about that. I mean, they're taking over facilities and for us to have a porter or a custodian. They can't work seven days. And didn't we have that before? Like, no, we had our own employees before. Right, that's what I mean. We had our own employees before. And, and a while ago, we, we didn't, I guess. Did, was there ever a time when? I think we need to do employees? what's best for the library. And if it means having one employee that stays here. And so if they can't work seven days, I think it's they can't work 69 and a half hours. It would have to be two. Yeah, it has to be two part time. Yeah. Right. Although I don't know how easily you can fill jobs right now, much less two part times. I think another just to throw that if we did we did that, how are we going to get that that money? Don't give it to them. Don't pay for that that position. In the schools, and I keep saying schools because that's what I'm familiar with. We contracted with companies to do a major part of our cleaning and that, but we also had. Um, individual custodians that we hired and kept in the schools because of that flexibility and had needing somebody to come to a ball game and empty trash cans and clean toilets and stuff like that. So we had both you contract with somebody, but you also have your own employees that at least one person in each school who can clean up, throw up because the custodial or, or the cleaning crews would come in in the evening. So you had to have somebody there during the day. Yeah, can't wait so hours. you're saying like like uh, Mr. Smith's cleaning service, yeah. we would hire out and to go out to bid and go through yeah, like or procurement. The county, use the county for that. I mean, that's that's kind of the same correlation where we're contracting with the county to do that. You're saying not hire the employee as an employee with our library just to hire an out state contractor. Yeah. Okay. And right. then that's a discussion with Don. Yeah, having, yeah. And it doesn't- Well, it's your employee. I mean- I, I don't know if it, well, I see that's where it gets slippery because if it's our employee, but it's getting paid, they're getting paid not by the library, by the county. If we use the county, do we get charged a fee for that? No. Yeah. no. Okay, so if we use the county, we get some free or included 
It's not, yeah, it's really kind of terrific services, isn't it? On the budget, right. didn't you say? Yes, on yes. Or did I misunderstand that? Did all that, did all that money um, allocated for custodial staff go to another line item? That's, that's correct. And that money is going to the county. So the money that we would be paying our own employees is actually going to the county. Correct. So we're being charged as a department. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that was the, it's just the easiest way. Yeah. Yes. We are paying for it. But we're getting less benefit now because now we are saying. So I don't know. I mean, is the this month is the maintenance thing part of the conversation of the hours? I mean, is that can we table that and of that course. be a separate yeah, conversation with Don yeah. and us just talk about Monday through Sunday? I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's. Except so. I, I think that that is part of the hours. If you don't have anybody here to maintain the, your restroom facilities mm -hmm. or the rest of the building, we on may on have a Sunday, solution. Or on a Saturday, you've got to. You just have to have somebody here, right? But I mean, I don't. We, you can't ask our employees. Yeah. To I, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah you and, know, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I mean, I clean them myself before I would ask an yeah. employee. So we can't be open Sundays if we don't have service. Well, I'm thinking Saturdays. I mean, you probably have more as many people here on a Saturday as you do on a Tuesday. But then didn't you say they provide Saturday service? Yes. Yeah. But, but we've not we've not signed any agreement with them. No, so nothing, I think no, we have. I think yeah. you, as our representative, yeah. has to be sure that the agreement includes. Yes. Right. And time on Saturday and, and whenever else we meet yeah. evenings. That's yes. when whenever. we're meeting with Don next week, and that's going to be in there exactly. So and he needs to give to him what hours we're presenting. Yes. That's good. Right. Okay, thoughts on hours. <laughs> so if you only have 33 employees now, how how do you plan on opening six, the 69 and a half by July? Are you all going to hire? extra people or we will have an additional part-timer coming on so we'll be up to 34. Okay. We need to look at the budget. I mean I just don't see how it's possible. I, I mean I, I want to be open six and a half hours, but you guys are saying your staff there's not a people. Right. Yeah. So why can't we assess pulling money or from somewhere else? I don't know. Again, I don't know Tennessee law here, but I think because you voted on the budget, I don't think you can now. Oh yeah, we can. We can well, amend it. Yeah, okay. we can amend the budget. Yeah. Okay. It just has to go back to the council. Uh, just for historical reference, I was, I wondered out of curiosity myself, so yeah. I went back to the data collection of the public library survey that you all do every year, just to see how, well, how long have we been operating? How long have you been operating at 69 and a half? And the, I, the electronic, the online form started in 2006. So I can only go back that far. I could, I have paper copies other places, but I didn't have time to go through that. But it shows at some point um, in 2008, it still had 69 and a half, it said 70 hours, but I su suspect that the system probably automatically right. upped it. Um, and you had 38 FTEs at that point. Just for historical So 2008. That was 2008. Is that 38 FTEs including maintenance? I think it was. I probably did. Yeah. used to have, but yeah, you know, I can't speak of 2008. Also though, I don't know what, I mean, you probably were not offering the kinds of services that you are now in the programs that you are now in. Sure. So that's, you know. We didn't have, we didn't have, we didn't have, we didn't have one. There was the gentleman who, like five years ago, who did the services for having me on. Right. So we have five full-time maintenance people here. We have four plus one full-time IT person. So that those. Okay. Yeah. IT stuff makes sense to me for the county. So is that 38 
school at 2008, operating at 62 and a half. And in all honesty, that probably wasn't ideal. <laughs> yeah, it's not right. I don't know. I wasn't hearing them. <laughs> <laughs> Now, when you're saying full time equivalents, that's not the same how many employees we actually have. No, it's 38 FTE. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that's 40 hours. So you may have had more. Then. Right. So that could be 20 part time employees. Well, not more. the way they. At that go. point, we had more part time than full time mm -hmm. in 2008. Right. right. Okay. Any feelings on, on the hours? Now, I don't think you can be open Sundays. I, I don't think I don't think it's wise to try and go for anything permanent. I think I, if I wanted to vote on something, it would be to then vote on it again a year from now or some Six other months. later time when something like staffing has a chance to be addressed. Um, I, I I agree on principle that I think the library should be open seven days a week on principle and ideally, but the staffing doesn't. Like that needs to be looked at very closely. And I think so it doesn't seem feasible right now to try and have that Sunday day. But I don't want to commit to having the Sunday day off because I would like to readdress the issue later. And I, I totally agree with you. I came from a library that was open seven days a week. I think and it's a public service. We and had enough bodies to do it. And not open it on Sundays right now. That that would bother me, but I totally understand how. We don't have enough physical bodies, but with that opportunity to to be again open on Sundays, yeah. Oh, I I agree. I I think I yeah. I think I kind of like some sort of a, maybe some sort of a memo or something that says we need to readdress this once FTEs get to a certain point or something like that. It automatically comes back up again. Um, I think that would be nice to have. If you is it more work to open on a Sunday, even if it's for four hours and cut back earlier nights, it's just more work because it's it's so hard to create a schedule with 69 and a half hours, no matter how you cut it. I mean, we've been trying to wrap our heads around how do we do it? Do we open at eight in the morning or do we open at it's it's not going to be easy, no matter what no the matter decision what. is. So, can you but does that? opening four hours does that really create just a a whole other issue of getting people to come in for four hours? On the can you actually do counts off of the, off of our machine in the front, telling us how many people come in every hour, um, at least after five. Are they? to have someone, someone would have to go to the door count at five o'clock and, and say, again okay, at six and again at seven yeah. and just see how many people yeah. and subtract. Can we do that? Yeah, you just have to make sure someone reads it. Yeah. Because the, the door counts set, basically they cut in half every Sunday of the week is what it's this year. When I look at it, we had some sad Sundays that were good, but it's, it cuts to about 50% of Sundays. I was just wondering if we're. And so, other, yeah, what hour? Yeah, how many people actually come into the library from five to nine? You know, I have no idea. I mean, we have a total count by, by day, right? I guess what I have a hard time when there's Sundays on Friday, like one of the options option went at 5 p.m. <clears> and at 4.30. <throat> so, no working individual. Can come to the library until Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Take your kids for during the week. You can't get off work at five. Take your kids here. It'd be close Friday and Saturday. If you worked in restaurants or et cetera. So I guess that's, I, I see there's a gap in the options and you know, the time. Then. And then, you know, I express my concern about they weren't given the option of a Sunday to go on staff. Well, just to rebut that. And again, just quickly, when I interviewed the entire staff, the majority, again, preferred not on Sundays. And in my mind, I'm saying, yeah, we should be open on Sundays. But reality kicked in when you have X amount of people right now. 
but I, I you but the know. mission of the library is for the community. So mm -hmm. when the community said they want Sundays, and so maybe that's culture shifts, changes with you know within what the mission is that you work here for. And the community wants full services on Sundays, correct? Well, I don't know. The, the survey response just said, I mean, what I looked at was the hours. Of Sunday. Yeah. It, I don't think the question asked the service. I'm just thinking on Sundays that, and they wouldn't get it, but, you know, we wouldn't have a story time or anything like that or no, no. specific services because we'd be a skeleton group, <clears throat> crew. So you may have, I don't know. You, it's a, it, there's not an easy solution, no matter what. It's. We offer the same things on Saturday that we do on Tuesday. As far as like a story time or? Anything. I mean, we don't have story times on yeah. all day on Tuesdays, for instance, do we? We do? But we do, no, I was just nodding yes to Lauren about story times on the on the weekend. Yeah. But you do have one on the weekends. On, on Saturdays. Saturdays at 10.30. I don't think I would be very surprised if we get a large increase in funding. I just would be. And so it's like, I think we need a plan for the future. And I think without without relying on that. And it's, so it's it's a budget thing, I think, for us. I think that we need to look at other areas of increasing person. Even though you're we're looking at two years from now. That's what it's, I mean, whenever I feel like that's the answer that I got back, whenever I met with the elected official I said, what do you think about Sundays? And said, you guys need to make it work with the budget that it is now. I would be very disappointed with our funding bodies if two years from now we go, or a year and a half from now, we go to them and ask for more money and they say, no, you can't have it. But what is Stop. even if they gave you more, it's probably not going to be more yeah, than two or three percent. What is the forty? What is the money of forty one? That's not bad. What, how much is forty one full time? Say average. I mean, you know, how much more plus on top of building and everything else, and you're looking at a large increase in budget. So if if what you're saying if. If we, we revisit the budget, say the book budget, that would get hit. So we could hire more staff or I'll just ask, databases I'm, would be it, it's it's yeah, it's I'm looking at I'm looking at um, 2019 stats and this year's stats, and it was just part of that sustainability plan. And I disagreed with KC from the very beginning. Um, and she disrespected our part-time people and wanted to go all full-time. And we know, yeah. all know that full-time people are more expensive because you have to pay benefits and all that other stuff. I hate to say this, but I think we're just going to have to, you know, when positions come open, we're going to have to look at if it's a full-time, it may be too part-time. Yeah. Budget is the reality. I think budget is where we have to look. Is we're Say it's ten positions times forty thousand plus benefits plus their retirement in X amount of years plus building stuff, etc. I just don't. I don't see how patron services is doing their job anyway. The number of people that you all have really lost because. In two thousand nineteen, there were five full time and fourteen part time. And now there are eight full time and four part time. So that's that's a huge body count list. So I don't I, I commend you all for doing what you're doing because I don't see how you do it. And I think that route that you're mentioning is the route we're gonna have to go. Yeah. Because this is something that when I saw yeah. it, I put a had a little cramp in my stomach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is so I think when there's a full-time position open, 
turning into two part times. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. And hopefully we can find the higher some that want to do part time yeah. that are still good workers. Part of the challenge is yeah. part times call in sick, they quit more so than a full time. My background in, in retail, it was easier to hire for the weekends. Yeah. During the week. Yeah. And so to hire, we, oh. had, we had employees that only worked Sundays. Yeah. And that was it. I mean, what do you think some teachers would be interested in coming work on the weekends? Uh, Teacher or teacher assistants? Yeah, or yeah. Yeah, because yeah, some of them, most of the teacher assistants in our system are just part time. Mm -hmm. So they would probably, you know, be interested. Or retired people. That would be a great bank right there, retired teachers. Which we had some. And we Which lost we them. had some and we lost them. <laughs> and perhaps moms, the kids are in school, they just want to work four or five hours. So that's the strategy then, I guess, to try to hire more part time and a few less full time. And one of my goals since I've started here is, is to reach out further in the, into the community and reach other communities that really haven't been, I think need to be really uh, touched and recognized. Like um, since I've been here, I've uh, Rotary and Kiwanis have wanted me to become a member, but I'm going with uh, Central Hispano, a different, which they, work with Blunt County as well, not only Knoxville. But I think that we need to tap into various communities out there and reach out and say how wonderful the library is. So then you have those opportunities where you're reaching out to another community um, to come work at the library. And I think that helps the library. I think that would help, it would, it would help in general. I think that's, Row I want to go. I think it brings, you know, library is for everybody. Everyone's welcome. That's where I want to go with it. I think doing that will help. Reaching out that maybe they didn't know there's employment at, and opportunities at the library. Well, sure is, and they're looking for work, and they're good workers, hard workers. Yeah. So are we feeling as a group that we cannot afford to be open on Sunday? So the feeling. I'll defer to their judgment, and it doesn't sound like they feel very comfortable and confident right now. But still, we have to say yes. Right, but we're not the here's, here's ones here running it. So if their suggestion is not to open on Sundays now. My recommendation right now, however, like what Tim said, we need to revisit it. So once we have Absolutely. the body, say we have it by, well, I mean, that'd be great. We'd be doing backflips here, but we have enough body. <laughs> then we can revisit like, you know. And school goes back in August and the summertime. Yeah. You looked a little slower. So I, I think I, we can move this to next month. <clears throat> we still have- we still, still have the same months. number of hours. But I still want to get down to what we think hours are concerned. So if we say, okay, no on Sunday for right now until we know how many employees we actually have in, in operate with and what our maintenance schedule looks like too, then how do, how do our Friday nights and Saturday nights look based on, the, on this schedule where we would be closed part of the Friday night on Saturday? On option one versus option two. So what, you know, what's your feelings on those? I wouldn't think people have come to the library much on Friday or Saturday nights. Would be my guess. You've never been open once, say that again. Unless you had a program or something. On the other hand, well, I said when they're open, open until nine, Monday, Thursday. Three years? Yes. Um, yeah. I think being open until eight is reasonable. Uh, what'd you say? We were always open. Our schedules before were 
Monday through Thursday, nine to nine, and then Friday and Saturday, nine to 5.30, and then Sunday is when we were open, one to 5.30. So we were, have never been open Friday and Saturday nights late. Yeah. Liz, what do other level, it's hard to compare with programming and buildings, but what are the other level five libraries staffed at? I mean, I don't, I can run reports on that. I, I think Cleveland has 38, yeah. 40 something. I think it was 40 and they're open 70 hours. They're open 70 hours yes. and it's, yeah, around about 40 something. But I mean, they struggle too, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's, and there's so many different factors. Their facility is sort of between, there's like a connector, a main facility between two older homes. Yeah. So they have, and they're yeah. multi-level. So you have to have eyes on each, you know, and you all are really laid out too. And you need to have eyes you know, and have people spaced out and all kinds of different, so it's, it's hard to compare yeah. exactly what, you know, um, the library is funded like they need to be. Um, I, don't, I don't know if they're open on Sunday. I don't know. Yeah. Let's see. Are they back to, I'm just curious. Yeah. Every, yeah, most everybody in our region, they're all back. So we say July 1st, but July 4th is a holiday. I don't know what day of the week that is. <coughs> but you might. Fourth is a Monday. It, it looks like they're nine to nine, Monday through Thursday, and on Friday, nine to six, Saturday, nine to six, Sunday, one to five. Okay, any more discussion on this? <laughs> All right. Yeah. It needs to be paired with uh, we're hiring. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or a plan to be open on Sundays yeah. come yeah. September 1. But to be fair, you haven't been open on Sundays yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Anyway, for two, what, two years probably? And we wouldn't want to position it as if you're losing anything. What you're mm -hmm. doing is you're gaining. And if the hours are changing, then they're, they're changing to adjust to things like, you know, it is a huge difference between uh, even when it was the 52 you take away the the five you know individuals that are going to be moving to the county and that's 47 and um what is it i know that when i started the ratio was 28 full-time to 22 and it would fluctuate you know give or take um you know we we've got something in plan in mind i would like to call out that in this if you look at the percentages look at how close they are it's close yeah and then also <clears throat> look at the actual count because i have to admit the first time i looked at these if i just looked at face value i was like yeah people definitely want um our our original hours if you will but actually, if you look at how close this is, and this is even of the 20, I think we had 2,800, yeah. only 2,300. So another 500 didn't even think it was worth weighing in what our hours should be. So what that tells me, if we look at the percentages of the 2,800, is that this, the community wants this open for 69 and a half hours. And they don't really care what those hours are because what you give up on a Sunday, 
you have greater access in the morning or in the evening. And what we couldn't, the populations that we couldn't reach when we were open on a Sunday, we now might be able to reach on an early morning or a, like it's, it's a give or take and it's an ebb and flow. And I like what Tim said about how, you know what? We're coming out of this. We don't know what it looks like and we certainly don't know what it looks like with the people that we've got. So let's move slowly. Let's not come from a place of lack and say, we're offering this to you and we're in a new way of doing it. And these are the kinds of the ways that we're doing. We're gonna need you to talk to us. So. Here is our director's email. Here is our board's email. Write them and tell them what they what it matters. And we reevaluate in a six month and a year. And maybe we tie in a community forum. We have a real opportunity to make this more about community engagement instead of us trying to fix, because Manny's right. There's not an easy way moving forward, period. So we take all that and put in some type of documentation because we're gonna we're gonna tip some people off. We know that. And and we have to give them a reason to be less tipped out because we're trying to make uh do trying to support their needs in a different way. And this is how we do it. And this is because we we don't know how you know I mean it's it's a financial thing. I mean we had all the money in the world and we were having these discussions. Huh? And, and one of the interesting things and concerns about if we go back and hit the operation, when we hit the ever, evergreen, our operations got a big hit. Um, I come to find out that the Maryville High School, their graphics department, their teacher uses our lynda.com. It could be easy to look at that and go lynda.com costs $15,000, yank it. That's a part-time person. But then we've just affected the graphic design course at our local school. So that's it, you know, we don't know all the elements that we touch. And so, you know, I think it's, I think it's okay for us to move slowly and go, this is what we know we can do for now. And we're gonna look at it and we're gonna listen to you. I'm gonna revisit it every year. And we slowly move back to, because COVID is COVID and 69 and a half hours is still 69 and a half hours. And when we can figure out maintenance, all this, we can move towards it. Put a schedule up to paper. Any, any drafts in your mind? And, you know, <laughs> like <clears throat> moving people 100. around wherever they need to. <laughs> we do, but what, whatever the schedule is, you know. I think that we have doodled and then we think we have the answer and then we look like, like I said, oh no, we don't. And then, okay, this can be done. What can be done? With the staff that we have, because that's what we've got. One of right. the things too. And they're wonderful staff, but they, they're not superhuman. They can't. Yeah. You know, what happens they can't you sometimes they are. Programming that. They only have so many hours. If you add pro programming back to the library like we have in the past, then can can this staff handle that? I think the honest answer is we don't know. No, probably not. Probably I mean, no. we no. saw we saw a four hundred percent increase, and that was such a huge jump that people didn't even believe that it was true. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's. That's what happened yeah. when that's what the focus is. Right now, our focus will be on looking at what our internal processes are, seeing where we can streamline so that we can make it to where they're the next opportunity if a full-time position opens up, if we're how we're feeling filling it, what that means in terms of um, internal processes. But we got to look at what internal process is going to identify them, see where we can give what. It, it, yeah, it's. Well, you have to do 69 and a half hours. That's a given. Yeah. You have to. You have to have more staff. So you're going to have to cut out some light yeah. items and expenses to, to cover. Exactly. To cover. And to accelerate the check-in system, the foot drop. 
area. That's all in the budget. Right that. Yeah, that that is so staff.com. Yep. And the book drop once we like once we get the book return um, space mm -hmm. so that we can add that, then we can see greater. It will be room for some sort of a budget analysis. Uh, but just work a little bit, spend spend a deep amount of time seeing if there's any anything we can trim out as far as so but you know low impact. I'm, so here's the thing: we can go in and we can do anything you guys want us to. It's getting it back. The count the county commission. It's it's. Um, rule of thumb that when you start pulling from your personnel or sorry, pulling from your operation because your personnel is not where that you're not managing your money well. And so it's perception. And so you it's not an open checkbook between the two. That's why county commission has to approve when you're moving mm -hmm. and they even have it so that it's between cost centers. Now we have uh, consolidated so we have one cost center but personnel and operations are separate once we move funds into so the year I was my position was created that was when county commission approved for that amount of money to be moved into um, from operations into personnel you can't it can't be like in two years, we're like, okay, we want to reduce that and put it back. So just realize that if we take, if we take books and we whack out 40,000, which could range between a $40,000 chunk could be one full-time person, or it could be four part-time people, maybe. Um, but you know, Consistency has a lot to do with our customer service delivery. Mm -hmm. And if you've got someone who's working one day a week for four hours, are they going to know the system well enough to deliver the type of customer service? Is Cynthia's position going to move from being able to address customer service issues to I'm full-time hiring, training, letting go, hiring, training. We just go. said the solution was to add more part-time people. That's kind of... Well, that's, it's, there isn't an easy, like, if a position comes up... We could split it, cut it in half, there you go, there's an extra person. But it will also depend, you know, Manny will talk with the, the managers and see, okay, is it essential that this stay a full time? Yeah. Do we go to sure. part time? You know, and there are points in my career where I didn't work full time, but I had a professional job. So there are people out there that are professionals that don't want to work 30 hours a week, they Absolutely. Work 30. So they might be hard to find, but. Uh, I'll, I'll just summarize this. This this is a pickle. This when I started here, I was like, my goodness, this is gonna be a big one. Um, I concur to when you get married, and you don't get to pick your in-laws, you inherit in-laws. This is uh this is my aunt Kathy. My my wife's aunt, and I'm like, good. There is not an easy solution. And like Logan said, we're gonna someone's not going to be happy even if it's not the community it could be a staff or you know are we're gonna you know pull 20,000 out of library books or something and then how do you get that back and I will tell you I learned that lesson the hard way when I was a very young director in East Bridgewater I said I'm gonna do that because I know we'll get that back eventually we did okay I said yeah. <laughs> Close again on that. So I'm going to cut this off if you don't mind and bring it back up next month. And that will give us two, still two more months to argue about this or talk about it. <laughs> and maybe we'll have some more, more information out of the numbers of people. We have a new budget July 1, right? And so, so right. it sounds like we kind of need to look at that. Our budget is, is yeah, constant yeah. for next year. Right. But 
but that's what all this is starting. Like, so if we need to kind of move, okay, so I'm sorry, I wasn't. She was asked about moving money for FY23 before July 1st, correct? I guess the main thing is, again, it's, I mean, you guys call the shots. So, you know, if you decide that you want us to move money, we'll then introduce you guys to the hurdles. And I shouldn't say hurdles, the processes in place because it'll require commission. It may require. Well, yeah, that's what it we may. Need to do. Yeah, but we have to rely on your suggestions because you all are the ones have to look run. at the budget and see where see where we are spending money on. It. And what we have been spending money on, it. and then we want to continue. And it's going to be the same for next year. It really is. We're not getting any more money. Yes. The bottom line, like I said, you as the board, you're the one who you could say, forget it, we're just going to be open this, and that's it, and we'll deal with it. And we will. Well, I think we lean on staff recommendation the most. And we're not going to say, bottom line, we're going to help you get there. But we're looking at what the citizens want, what we have to do with the MOE. But I do think. I don't know how we're ever going to get to more people without getting a larger budget. And I don't think we're ever going to solve this unless we look at the budget. Why? Again, this is opening up a big can, but well, <laughs> why did this? I won't even say it. No, this is, don't. yeah. So. Um, just so that you know, um, the, the budget pre COVID was 2.69 and change. We're not even close to that. So right now, the sustainability plan was put forth, voted on, approved, and it was partially implemented. There were two more months before leadership changed. And I'm bringing that up just so that we understand why we gave a lot of people full-time positions. We have asked if they would like to step back they have not said that they would those who have said they would we're taking them up on that offer and that's happening so with time and dependent on we already know that no pressure chelsea but chelsea's doing gangbuster because she has that dedicated and educated approach to our cafe and our meeting rooms that would those are our revenue service uh yes. revenue streams that are pulling things up as that increases our options to increase personnel also increase so this year we are we've already bumped up at our mid-year estimates we increased we went from 101,000 to 135,000 because it looks like we're going to bring in another 30,000 above what we planned. So there is potential. We've just got to, I think, move slow and have the end goal in mind. I don't, I think we're going to tie ourselves in knots if we go, okay. On March 16th of 2020, we closed at 69 and a half hours doing this services. July 1st of 2022, we're going to open up doing the same exact thing. So I guess we need you guys to tell us what it would take to get to that day. Because we need to know how many people and what the money is. Would you like a, are you wanting like a time frame with that? Or I'm just I'm trying to. I mean, I guess maybe the one to five or whatever. I mean, I think there has been end game, right, for us to reach you. And we need you to tell us what you need to get there. And then we need to figure it out. I'd like to know if if opening till nine o'clock at night makes a difference mm -hmm. on Fridays and Saturdays or Thursdays and Fridays or whatever. Can we offset a Sunday with this? There's only reason you couldn't close at eight. Right. I agree. Is that it's, much traffic, eight to nine o'clock? Well, it seems like yeah, you got to figure out those four hours something. Yeah. So that's what we're saying. Move this four hours. Okay, our hour is up. So <laughs> I'm going to table yeah. this until, until next week or next month. <laughs> uh, 
So think about this seriously. And another thing we need to think about again is we eliminated fees, late fees, and that was a big chunk of money for people who didn't hear their books on time. And we have really not addressed that we talked about that. I think we talked about eliminating it, but that's something we can bring back with no problem if we wanted to. So can, can I just say one more brief thing? Well, we have an address, so I can say it. Um, if we were open on till about eight o'clock or nine o'clock, that would increase our revenue because these meeting rooms would be, be utilized. But they were on Sunday. Right? I thought we left them open anyway. And we just had the yeah. nice person. No, it's we 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 didn't have any meetings after library was closed on Fridays or Saturdays. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other new business? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you next month. See you, see you at the meetings. <laughs> <laughs>